Hi. Hola. Bonjour. Konnichiwa. Guten Tag. I'm Billy. This is my workshop, and you're watching KHA Entertainment. And if you couldn't tell by that intro, today we're taking a look at the Creality High combo. Let's get into it. I first saw the Creality High combo at CES 2025, and I'll be honest, I thought to myself, well, this looks just like another Bamboo A1 clone. To be frank, I was much more interested in a K2 Plus, but sadly, Creality wouldn't send me one of those. Not yet, anyway. As an added bonus, they're sending me to Rapid TCT in Detroit next week, so I really can't complain. So before we dive into the unboxing, if you haven't already surmised that Creality sent me this printed for free, well, they did. But they did not pay me for this video. They have no control over what I say or show you all, and this video is gonna cover my actual thoughts and opinions on this machine. So with that said, let's get this thing unboxed. The Creality High Combo is Creality's newest Cartesian style or bed slinger multicolor printer featuring a 260 mm by 260 mm by 300 mm build volume, ever so slightly beating the 256 mm squared build volume of the A1, X1, and P1 series that this machine competes with. It has an average print speed of 300 mm per second with max speeds rated at 500 mm per second and an acceleration speed of 12,000 mm per second. The build plate strays away from the standard PEI used by most of the industry these days in favor of a smooth epoxy resin build service. This will definitely be something we'll investigate further in this video. The hotbed can reach temperatures of 100 degrees Celsius and then the nozzle can reach temperatures of 300 degrees Celsius. Those are some good temperature ranges, but with the lack of an enclosure, we'll still limit the types of materials we could print with. The multicolor abilities come by way of the Creality CFS, or the Creality Filament System. It's the same CFS used by the K2 Plus and is now backward compatible with the whole K1 line as well. So kudos to Creality for making everything work together. I've not yet worked with the CFS myself, but I've heard people say they're easier to maintain than the AMS or the Ace Pro. And I do like that the temperature and humidity display are built right into them. But let's take a second to point out a feature that's become fairly standard in multicolor setups. The CFS's RFID functionality. Both the CFS itself and the external spool reader can read RFID tags. Though, as with Bamboo Lab and all the others right now, it only supports their own brand of RFID. For the time being, you know how this community is. Workarounds and third-party systems are already in motion. All right, we've got it unboxed and set up, so you know what time it is now. We've got to print that first Benchy. So surprisingly, there's not a test Benchy loaded on the machine ready to print. So I went to the Creality web or Creality print uh, mobile application. I found the first 3D Benchy that's here, and we are going to use the app to uh, send our first print to the printer. We'll slice it, which I do think is kind of cool that there's actually like a mini version of Worker Slicer built into the app rather than just relying on community-driven G-code from other, you know, from other machines. Uh, you can actually change the parameters, so that that is a pretty cool difference than, say, Bamboo Handy. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave everything the same. 0.2 standard height, hyper PLA. Uh, let's slice. All right, and for this first Benchy, we are going to use the Creality Hyper PLA Peach Fuzz. Here we go. All right, the first print is done. This resin, this resin sheet is pretty legit. That was on there. Now, this wasn't a speed benchy. This took about 39 minutes, but this is pretty clean. This is a really, a really clean benchy. It's a, no, no elephant's foot. No string here. Very nice. All right, um, next we are gonna do a first layer test. So I printed this first layer test with the Creality Hyper PLA White, and it looks really good upon first inspection, but there's this little defect that printed towards the back where it kind of burnt 
the PLA a little bit, so I'm not sure what caused that. So let's do one more, and I'm going to use the Hyper PLA Blue this time. All right, we're printing it again with Hyper PLA Blue, and it is looking excellent. Uh, let's jump forward a little bit, and this came out perfect. This is one of the cleanest first layer tests I have produced, and I, I am really impressed with this bed material, this resin bed. Uh, it's holding on to everything excellently. All right, we're going to move on to a torture toaster to see how a print and place object works out on this printer. There we go. Rim off. Okay, first impressions. I mean, it's pretty clean. Just the little tiniest imperfection at the very top of the toast, which is fairly common. I've printed this on four different printers so far and they almost all never get that perfect, that ridge. Um, the text is good. Let's see. Oh. It's like one of, our, one of our levers broke because the brim held it in place. Okay. Okay, the tolerances, the point two and the point, let's see, which was that? The point four and the point five fell out just by removing the brim. Point one, point two, and point three, oh, point three broke. So point one and point two are fused. I need to stop printing torture toasters with brim. I usually just leave it at the settings provided by the person who designed it because I anticipate that they had it set up to print properly, but when you print a torture toaster with brim, it kind of fuses things together. Well, let's look at the, the text came out, the vertical text came out nice. I'm gonna stop it here so I can remove the brim and then we could test the gears. Okay, so it's not the fairest of comparisons because the brim kind of locked everything up. But once the brim was removed, these were able to turn. And I, I only bothered with one side. It's going to be the same on this side. So, but overall, very clean torture toaster. And um, yeah, I'm, I can't say I'm impressed with the results, but it's pretty standard for this type of printer at this price point. Now we're going to do an all-in-one printer test to check on the tolerances that this machine produces. Okay, our all-in-one printer test is looking really, really clean. Um, a lot of the times this text is nearly ineligible on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but this is pretty good. Like this is imp actually impressive and the overhangs made it almost all the way to the end. That 80 degrees is the only part that's really starting to have trouble. Let's see. Let's check some of the tolerances. So, 10 millimeter. Nine point seven. Internal, we're at 7.5. Okay, looks like this one is supposed to be seven millimeter. Maybe it's eight. It's reading. I'll, I'll put in the comments uh, on, I'll put text on the screen as to what it's actually supposed to be, but it's reading 7.8. Okay, vertical height. That's nearly perfect. That's 30.1, 30 millimeters. Okay. Let's see. 20's reading pretty close. 
9.7 on the 10 millimeter. And bridging. The bridges are all clean. No errors with the bridging. Let's get, this will be the X, X axis tolerances. 10 millimeters, nine point, oh, wait. 10.1. Okay, let's check the Y. The Y is just a little shy, 9.8. Hole test. Okay, this is supposed to be an eight millimeter. 7.65. Oh, wait. Let's just say 7.5, it keeps averaging back out to that. So again, as with a lot of the printers, this is this can be fixed with XY hole compensation. Um, it probably just needs a slight bump to get uh, closer to what it should be. It's about, it's about half a millimeter off. So if this was an engineering part, that could be an issue. Um, let's try, let's say this should be four millimeters wide on the X. Okay. That it's pretty good. 3.9, 3.94. There's not as high of a chance of error with rectangular shapes as there are with round shapes. Round shapes have a tendency to get smaller than they should be. Uh, rectangular shapes are easier for the printer to manipulate. All right. Again, this is a really clean, this is one of the cleanest all-in-one 3D printer tests, and I've done this on all my printers so far. Uh, so I, while the torture toaster didn't necessarily impress me, uh, this does. This, I think this one even came better than the one on my Flashforge 85M, and that's what I've considered one of my most precise printers so far. Okay, let's go on to the next. There's one more print we have to do before we can get into the multicolor testing, and that would be the poop bin. Luckily, it comes built into the uh, to the Creality High as one of the pre-built, pre-sliced files. 53 minutes. Um, let's give the white PLA another chance. It didn't print too good on the layer test, but let's see what happens here. So for the multicolor test, we're gonna switch out the peach fuzz and the white for some anycubic pearl black and texture gray. And the reason I'm going with these colors is I have multiples of these and I also have multiple Creality Red. The only variable is gonna be the blue. So the Creality Blue is gonna stay in here. I'm gonna have to use Polymaker Blue on the Bamboo A1. Um, but the blue is, uh, I mean, it's a pretty integral part of the model, but we'll just have to keep it in mind as we compare. Um, for the most part, it will be all the same filaments on the two models. Since the Creality High doesn't use texture PEI, it uses a epoxy resin. I am gonna swap the bed on the Bamboo A1 to have something similar. So instead of texture PEI, we're gonna go with this PEO sheet that actually has a water ripple texture, which is gonna be kind of cool with what we're printing. Interesting little uh, little caveat here. I've gotten this twice now, this warning that there is a stray object on the build plate. And as you can see, there is nothing on the build plate. So I'm not sure what's causing this, but if it keeps happening, I'm gonna have to email Creality about it and see what's going on. If I click okay, it's gonna start the job, but I didn't realize this error was on there and then like an hour went by and I'm like, wait, is this printer not doing anything? And the A1 is chugging along and the Creality is just sitting here because I didn't get a notice about this error. All right, we are underway with the Creality High versus Bamboo A1 printing out Stargates because you know, you need Stargates in pairs. 
somewhere in that process, the infill changed. This has... I'm not even sure what infill pattern this is. This looks like it defaulted to grid, which I would never choose intentionally. So that could be why there's the time discrepancy, why this one is taking three hours longer than this one. Now, well, keep that in mind when we're comparing, but hopefully it won't affect the surface details, which is going to be the most important thing we're looking at. All right, let's take a look at our Stargates. Now, here we have the Bamboo A1, and this came out really clean. Like a little, that's not even stringing, that is German Shepherd hair. Um, yeah, this, this came out excellent. The, the symbols are nice and easy to read. I use that water texture plate, which is kind of cool. There's a, nope, that's nothing permanent. That was just strings that were on the surface. No color contamination. Okay, so the A1, you know, as predicted, came out pretty nice. And now this is the Creality High. And I actually do like this shade of blue that they gave me. Let's say, again, that's just some, some dirt on there. That's not actual stringing. Symbols are very clean. The bottom layer is really nice. There's no texture plate because it was just the resin sheet, but uh, solid, perfect first layer. Detail on the chevrons and the symbols is is really good. I would say this is on par. Uh, this is very close. Uh, it, like honestly, almost identical in quality, in my opinion. Um, print speed was about the same. It did estimate that the Creality would finish faster, but in reality, it took about the same amount of time. So, uh, this is a great alternative. Like uh, a a really good alternative printer if you're in the market for a multicolor bed slinger. Before we wrap this video up, I did want to do a quick comparison of the waste output of the Creality High and the Bamboo A1. Now, I thought the High was actually producing more waste because of the volume, but it actually just wound up not coiling the, the output as, as tightly as the A1 does. So you'll actually see here that the Creality came in as the winner, producing only 70 grams of waste, where the Bamboo had 76. It has come the time, for now at least, to say goodbye to the Creality High. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss what's coming next. Speaking of what's coming next, we have uh, some new additions to the workshop, so be sure to stay tuned for that. We'll be doing some unboxings, reviews, and lots of cool new projects with some pretty big machines. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.